In this episode of Cloud Performance Atlas, I show a phishing friend all the tools he'll need to catch a big performance problem. Will this be the one that got away? Stay tuned to find out. So my friend Carter has built a new website called Bait and Stitch, which helps phishing enthusiasts connect with designers to make custom apparel. After a few weeks in beta, Carter asked for some help. He was noticing that his request latency got significantly slower under heavy load, due to the fact that new instances took longer times to start. Now, typically when I hear feedback like this, it means one thing, cold boot performance. Uh, see, when a new app engine instance is spun up for the first time, it has to execute a bunch of work that only occurs during initial boot. Uh, things like starting the debugger, initializing global variables, or pre-populating some memcache data. Performance becomes a concern here because instances that are typically created in response to a request that comes in. So if an instance is booting up, the total time to respond to that request is a function of the normal work that needed to be done for that response, as well as any startup work that has to be done as well. Now to be very, very, very clear here, cold boot performance isn't normally a problem. Uh, App Engine startup time is really fast. I mean, uh, take a look at this. I charted the cold boot time for basic Hello World application across various instant types. 250 milliseconds is actually pretty fast for an F2 instance to boot up. I mean, that's technically faster than fetching a JavaScript file for most CDNs on a 4G connection. <laughs> Which means GAE by itself is really good at responding to instance creation time. However, the users of Bait and Stitch were noticing performance issues because of cold boot time, which meant that it was time for Carter and I to sit down and dig in and figure out what was going wrong. And our first stop was take a look at the logging data. See, App Engine does a really good job of logging information about each request that it receives, most important of which is how long it took for the request to be handled by the service. Now, logged items which correspond to system events are often logged in blue. Startup time is one of those items, so we can click on the log entry to get more data. Startup requests will typically have a header value of loading requests set to one. Furthermore, these log entries are flagged with some extra information that tells you about the instance being spun up and how it'll be a little bit slower than a typical request. Now, looking at the logs, we can see that there's a group of really fast requests at the bottom of the set, which confirms exactly what we're expecting. The loading request is actually pretty slow. What we didn't expect, however, is the batch of calls in the middle, which follow the loading request. Those are just as slow, but sadly at this point, logging won't give us any more information. So it's time to switch over to something a little more powerful. And one of the nice things about App Engine being a platform as a service is that it's got a bunch of nifty other tools built into it that you don't have to go generate yourself. One of the more powerful ones is Stackdriver Tracing. See, uh, and in addition to being logged, each request that comes through App Engine Standard gets its RPC call information tracked and listed in Stackdriver. To find loading requests, we need to dig around a bit. Uh, they typically aren't listed directly, but they have a higher response time than normal requests that come through. Uh, to confirm this, you can select a trace. If the debuglet started command is in the trace details, then it's what you're looking for. This block only executes when a new instance has been spawned, so it's a clear sign that this was a request that caused a cold boot to occur. Now, as mentioned, any RPC calls that your app makes will be logged here. And uh, we can see that this app is uh, touching memcache, doing a fetch and pushing some stuff to task queues. None of those really look like a performance problem at this point. But what's really interesting here is that there's about 900 milliseconds before the socket was created to allow a connection to the instance. This is a uh, rough indicator of the startup time taken. So uh, App Engine's boot time isn't the problem and none of our RPC requests are the problem, but Bait and Stitch's loading time is still about 1.2 seconds. Hmm. To get more insight, we need to profile more of our code. Uh, see, tracing does a great job of keeping a tab of what RPC function calls take, but it doesn't track all custom code that occurs between those calls. To do that, we need to leverage the Stackdriver Trace API that allows us to insert custom tracing data into our requests. Uh, Carter and I were able to write a small utility class which tracked the start and end time of various code segments and would turn those results into a JSON string on demand. Adding a uh, little entry exit setup and we quickly had an API to log how long a block of code takes. Passing that data off to the Stackdriver API allowed us to insert custom tracing data for blocks of code that weren't previously being logged. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> now with the custom tracing setup, we now had a very clear picture of what was going wrong in the bait and stitch applications cold boot time. 
and uh, it wasn't pretty. But to figure out that problem, we needed to dig in a little deeper, which is a subject for a different video. If you wanna learn more about tracking down performance problems, make sure you check out the rest of the Cloud Performance Atlas videos. And don't forget, when it comes to performance, every millisecond counts.